for the last installment of this Mocktober series. We're gonna cut in half what might be the highest quality mock toe in the entire world. NYX Handmade Boots new mock toe boot that just released today. And this video is sponsored by NYX and in full disclosure, they've, they've sponsored four or five videos. I did the boot collaboration with them. So if you've never seen the channel before, I do have a working history with NYX. But the beautiful thing about cutting boots in half is you see exactly what's on the inside and I, and I hope that I give you enough information that even if you think I'm being biased, that you have everything you need to make a decision for yourself. And huge thanks to NYX for getting this done because I begged them to get this boot to me by the end of October. I know a lot of you guys spammed them nonstop trying to get this in for Mocktober. So huge thanks to you guys and NYX for sponsoring this video. Now let's go over the boot information. So the brand is NYX. The style is the six inch wedge sole Mocto Traveler, but they're also doing them in the Overlanders and their super popular Builder Pro. The color is a 1964 leather. They weigh two pounds, two ounces. They retail for $520 and they're made in Spokane, Washington, USA. Now let's go over the information that we can gather about these before we cut them in half, starting with the upper. So this is Nick's new 1964 leather. I like this leather a lot and it's it's kind of reminds me of, of Red Wings Oro leather, but a, a lot thicker and not quite as loud and uh, bright orange. It's more of a subtle orange and you can see this Overlander pair that I've been wearing. It's gotten a lot lighter just from the flexing and the moving and the wearing of the leather. It's it's brightened up quite a bit. And the leather is a seven to eight ounce leather, which is, let's see, 3.2, 3.3 millimeters thick. You don't usually see this thick a leather in work boots, let alone a mock toe. And the reason for that is it's so hard to stitch a mock toe on here. And we'll kind of go over that later. And this leather is really tough to break in because it's so thick and it's a fairly stiff leather. I took these deer hunting over the weekend and the first day it just felt like I was walking around in cast and I could only wear them around the camp a little bit. But by six or seven days in, they, they feel pretty good now. Is the polar opposites of thorough goods. Thorough goods, you can wear them for the first day and by the end of the day, you're pretty well broken in. These, Nix recommends doing 200 hours before they're, they're really broken in. And they're not exaggerating when they say that. it takes a lot of wear and, and use to get these things broken in. But once they're broken in, that thicker leather holds its shape a lot better and contours your foot a lot more. Because if you've had a pair of thorough goods, I love thorough goods, but they don't have that same fit and feel. It kind of just feels like you're wearing a leather sock, which is super comfy, but it's just a completely different ball game with this thick of leather. Next to the lining. So this has a, a lining only in the vamp. It's a leather lining. And the one nice thing about this is it's not sewn together with this mock toe because one of the downfalls of a mock toe boot is that all these holes punched into the vamp allows water to seep through. But having that that lining not be sewn together, those holes don't go all the way through into the inside of the boot. So it allows for a little bit more water resistance with these boots. Then to the construction. So this is a stitch down construction at the vamp and then nail down at the back heel area, just like all the rest of the NYX boots. But the one interesting thing about this construction being a mock toe is the mock toe itself. There, Cause there's really three types of mock toe constructions. There's the, the true moccasin construction, the two piece construction and single piece construction. A true moccasin construction is built just like the pair of moccasins you probably had as a kid where, where the sidewalls wrap all the way underneath and is a single piece sewn to that top part right here. It's a really simple construction and it's really low profile, but it's really hard to find boots made like that because they basically have to be made by hand. The two piece construction is probably the most popular type of mock toe where you've got your sidewall that doesn't wrap under all the way and is sewn to a separate piece on top, just like these red wings. This allows for just a little bit taller toe box for a little bit more wiggle room, but it is prone to splitting because if that stitch wears out, that's the only thing really holding it together. And then the single piece construction doesn't have two pieces and it doesn't wrap underneath. It's a single piece vamp like you see in most boots, but that stitch line gathers and puckers the leather to give it that mock toe look and, and feel. This type is the most durable because even if you do wear out all this stitching, it's a single piece of leather and it's not gonna fall apart like the two piece construction, but you don't get that height that you see in the red wings and some of these other two piece constructions that allow for a lot taller toe box. And you usually only see this one piece mock toe construction with thinner leather because it's really hard for a machine to sew this mock toe stitch in a thick leather like this seven to eight ounce. But NYX has bought one of the only machines capable of creating a mock toe stitch in this super thick leather. So that's one of the reasons why you don't see this thick a leather in a mock toe, especially a one piece mock toe. And then next to the outsole. So this is the Vibram 2021 wedge rather than the Christy outsole by Vibram that we usually see on mock toe boots. And I asked NYX why they went with this wedge rather than the Christy. 
and they said it's a lighter outsole and it's a little more wear resistant in a work setting because really with any wedge sole it's never going to last quite as long as like a heavy lug outsole or a hard rubber outsole but I do just like the look of this outsole. It kind of flows with the boot a little bit more. It doesn't look quite as chunky as the Christie. And then to the midsole. So this boot basically has two midsoles. So you got this rubber layer right above the outsole and then the really thick leather midsole above that. And there's pros and cons to the, the rubber midsoles and the leather midsoles. Rubber, rubber midsoles don't compress to your foot, but they do bond better to the outsoles. The leather midsoles give you that nice footprint and compression and, and movement and durability, but they don't bond quite as well to the outsoles. So what NYX has done is, is basically added both to this boot so that you have the bonding of the outsole to the rubber midsole, but all the durability and longevity of a big fat slab of leather in the midsole as well. And then finally to the fit, feel, and look, I think these are probably the best looking mock toe out there. I, I also really love the classic red wing look with the, the little bit of the, the clown looking toe. But for an overall mock toe, this mock toe is one of the, the best looking mock toes I've seen. I, I love the look of it, especially, you know, with these where you, you can see where I've started to wear them in. It looks so good. And as for how they feel, they're, they're kind of a unique feeling boot because usually this boot has a higher heel, but on the wedge, it drops the heel a little bit so that when you first start wearing these boots and start breaking them in, it's a little bit of a rocking feeling when you walk because that toe is lifted just a little bit because the heel has dropped. But once they get broken in, it kind of flattens out and everything feels normal. But it is something worth mentioning because it is kind of a unique feeling boot at first. So now that we covered everything on the outside, it's time to really get to the important bits, the inside, the guts of this boot. So let's cut it in half. All right, we got to cut in half. Let's see what's inside. Okay, so we got it cut in half and I'm more confused now than before we got it cut in half because we can see that there's a single layer midsole, that really thick leather midsole we talked about. And I even sanded it to double check that it's a single piece. But on the inside, it starts thick and then tapers down and then tapers back up again. So I thought for a second that maybe it's two pieces of the midsole, but then at looking at the outsole, it's not two pieces. So I think what they do is they taper that down to make room for that really thick leather shank right there. That's what this layer is right here. And the reason that they do this is when you have a nail down construction at the heel, it creates a void really similar to what we what you see in a Goodyear welted boot. And it has to be filled with something. So Nix fills that void with that leather shank right there, that super thick shank. And because it's the wedge sole boot, they don't have quite as much heel to give the extra room to have all those layers in there. So what they do is they sand down this leather midsole just in the middle so that the leather shank sinks down in there without creating a big bump in the middle and while still maintaining that really thick leather midsole. So it's a really interesting way of maintaining all the structural pieces that NYX is known for while still being able to make a wedge sole boot. That's really interesting. I did not, I had no idea that that's what was gonna be on the inside of this. So now that I fully understand how this boot is actually built, I really think this boot fixes all the problems that we've seen in every single one of the mock toes because every mock toe we've seen has at least one or two problems that we wish it would fix or that one boot has this one thing that's good, this other boot has this other thing that's good. This boot fixes all the problems that we've seen in other mock toes. It has the full grain leather counter. It has the leather lasting board that shapes to your foot. 
It has the really thick leather midsole and the rubber midsole. It has less cork and more leather, which is always a plus. And it has this really thick leather upper, which can be a pro and a con. Oh, and, and the single piece vamp, which is more durable, which is also, I guess, a pro and a con. The only other cons I can think of is these are a beast to break in. They are not an easy break in. And they are twice the price of every other mock tool we've ever cut apart. And it's a boot that you can buy and wear casually and never work in, or it's a boot that you can buy and only work in and, and really reap the benefits of those high quality materials. There are a few one-man shops that are making maybe a, a better finished boot because NYX is a work boot company and the stitches aren't always perfectly lined up. But from the perspective of durability and materials and construction from a company that's making more than one boot at a time, in my opinion, this is the best mock toe boot that money can buy. And if you disagree, prove me wrong. Tell me why they aren't the best. Or if there's another boot company out there that's making a better mock toe boot, let me know. But I think I'm pretty confident in saying this is the best mock toe boot you can buy. So if you want a pair of these, check them out via the link in my description. And to be even more transparent, Nick Nix pays me for this video, but I don't get any other bonuses or rewards or incentives or extra money if you guys decide to buy a pair. My job's done. They've paid me for the video. So there's nothing extra in it for me if you guys decide to buy a pair of these. So let me know what you guys think. If you think I'm wrong, prove me wrong. I love, I love finding it when companies make the best things humanly possible with no corners cut. Um, and I love when people prove me wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong. So so thank you guys for watching. This October has been so much fun. We have the finale where we'll kind of go through everything maybe next week. But that's the end of October. Um, it's my favorite series. And I'm sad it's over. But it was a lot of work this year. So thank you guys. See ya.